Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today. And before we introduce our special guest of the day, <laughs> I want to remind you that subscriptions to this magazine are free. And so we, we invite you to invite your friends. We would like you to uh, go to our, our um, Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube, subscribe. Um, you know, help us grow this thing, grow the community. It's for everybody. Uh, the, the Ferrari in the parking lot is, a, is only this big. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we ain't here for the money, folks. We ain't here for the money. We're here to uh, advance to the best of our ability guitar. So that being said, we'll introduce you to our, our good friend, Fareed Hawk, who is here talking about a new project. Yeah, a new album, a new project, new album. So is it Casillas or how, how, do you, how do you say it? It's a French Haitian, so it's Casseus. Well, I would have known that. <laughs> <laughs> and with all your French Haitian, all of our French Haitian friends um, running over. But yeah, uh, it's it's a real interesting uh, project and, and pretty kind of a departure for me. But I think the, the projects that I'm focusing on now are things that I feel like, well, Maybe I have a special skill set for the for that kind of thing, and there's just so much good guitar out there, so much good music that I, I'm not sure we need you know another bebop guitar record, you know, playing the oh, blues. Oh, that's the hundreds more. Right, hundreds more. At, at least more. Cer certainly wow. for me, from me, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I'm always looking for special projects, and and uh, uh, Mark uh, Rebo sent me, you know, when I was heavily touring. Uh, with Joe Zavinal, with Paquito, um, De Rivera, um, with Bob James. <laughs> During that time, I was like teaching three days a week, uh, touring two weeks, and then coming back and teaching another three days, spending three days at home, teaching three days, touring 12 days for like 30 years. It was, yeah, yeah and I, I, um, I'm not sure how I did it, but I did it. And, uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of time outside of of that. So Mark sent me this package in the mail and I just kind of was like, ah, cool. And I never really looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I opened it up, you know, when I got back to my university office and it was this package of handwritten music by Franz Caseus, who at that time was hardly known, uh, you know, even less than he is now probably. Um, and I was just kind of interested but a little confused by it because mark was like you should play this <laughs> you know and i was like gay yeah i mean <laughs> and it was really simple music right it was really easy mm -hmm. technically in some ways um so i read through it and i was like this is nice yeah and then over the years i'd like come back to it, be like well, actually this is this is cool you know and uh slowly started getting into the the subtlety of it. Now, Franz Caseus was Haitian. He uh, was a well-educated, uh, you know, Afro-Francophile, I guess you'd call it. Um, uh, so French, Haitian, spoke and was, you know, educated, spoke, you know, French and, uh, and Haitian, uh, spoke, it was educated in the impressionistic French music. You know, a really sophisticated composer, uh, personality, well-read, well-educated. But at that time in the 40s and 50s, you know, if you were black, you were from an island, you weren't going to get. So there wasn't, you know, the attention paid to him that there probably should have been by the classical music establishment. The only recordings of him are on Smithsonian folkways. Oh, boy. And, uh, and that's a guy with a, a you yeah, know, real to real and a microphone being sure. like, I know what that is. I mean, it's cool for what it is, but Hey, you know, no, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not right. You know, yeah. this guy was not a blues guy on the plantation. You know, this guy was a concert guitarist with a flate guitar. You know, he should have been given that respect yeah. and he wasn't. So Mark really took it upon himself to, uh, to celebrate his, his genius as a composer. Um, and, you know, put out this first volume of his music. I had the handwritten music and and a lot of interesting notes on it. In his I, I, I assume so, yeah. Wow. Um, and so I began reading through it, and, and every time I'd go back from the road, I'd come back home and I'd, you know, 
take that envelope out and pull out another piece, you know. Right. And uh, and then we started playing it with my band, and it just was the coolest music. Uh, he was also the uh, the guitarist who backed up Harry Belafonte for many years. Oh, okay. Right. So he was a classical guy who understood jazz, who understood ensembles, who understood groove, who understood the Haitian santeria and voodoo traditions. You know, there's a lot of connections happening there yeah. that didn't necessarily... I mean, we think of New Orleans as the birthplace of jazz, where... French and African culture sort of paved the way for the American experience, right? Right. The, that's, that's what I've always learned. Right. The Puritan, uh, English, Irish, German, American experience didn't really have an opening for the groove and the dance and the, the funk of that music, you know. But in Haiti, where you had all, you know, the, the French were, were the oppressors, if you will, there was much more of an acceptance of the the vibrancy of that culture. So it, it comes through. And we started playing the music with my band and, and shit was just magical right off the bat. You know, we, we played at Millennium Park in Chicago. We, you know, I don't know, 50, 15,000 people, 10,000 people. saw the video. And people are moving and grooving. And first time they heard the music, you know, and I'm not, typically I play, you know, plectrum style, you know, right. People would know me as a sort of Pat Martino influenced, McLaughlin influenced cat. And here I'm playing much more Afrocentric, all finger style, no pick. Um, well, it's a stretch playing, for me. You're playing more than that because you've got a very, very sophisticated right hand. You know, it's, 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 it's more than, because that's your classical background too. And that's kind of why I thought, man, this is something that I can do that not a lot of other classical players can do, not a lot of other jazz players can do yeah, I mean, you, you have to have you have to have not a little bit of each thing you have to have a lot of each thing in your, in your and i've been really working on my right hand chops because you know i got into the afro sound when i was playing with joe zavinal right and that i was doing mostly with a pick but i knew that most of those cats played finger style at right. the time my nails were just like getting destroyed, you know? And I was like, I can't, I just can't. I have classical concerts that I've got. Imagine, you know, I was playing the Strat with Joe Zavinal. Yeah. Playing, you know, I would be playing like. For 20 minutes, I was just like, that's all I did, you know? And you just had to be cool with it. You know, I was the bass player. You know, in in a sense, in the band, yeah, you know, right. bass Matt Garrison was all over the place, playing solos, playing beautiful stuff. Yeah. Joe played whatever the hell he wanted to, just chords, <laughs> and, and I'm just like, <laughs> and 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 I honestly got, I mean, it's kind of a digression, but it's hilarious, man. No, this is great stuff. I would play two notes with Joe. I play two notes, like I'd be playing da 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 da, but but, and he'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> he was super controlling and, and that was very uncomfortable and, and, and really, you know, hard to, to deal with, especially someone who's, you know, I think I'm known as, as an exuberant, energetic soloist, you know, and yeah. I play, you know, and I, here I am like, no, 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 no solos. No, not for you. Everybody else, but not for you. You just, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. so anyway, uh, I, uh, God, there's so many crazy stories with the show time. There, uh, this is not to do with anything, but there was one uh, tune where um, my whole part, I think I have a guitar here. Do you mind? Can I? No, no, not at all. Ah, there's a guitar always somewhere around here. Um, we might we might not be able to get it out. The, um, I found that my audio, I need to probably put my headset on. Well, you'll just see. I mean, it's just more for the, for the visual. Let me see if it. Let me see. Try, play a note or two on it because you yeah, you've got a headset on. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um. That's the key. The key. Is, you got to have it. So it doesn't matter if it's in tune because this was my part. <laughs> minutes, 20 minutes. And so 
I had to get to the point where I could go like wrist, arm, fingers. Because you'd get tired, you'd, uh, you'd have to rest. That's why I'm just doing the fingers now. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like going, oh, I'll get this, these phones out of the way here. So I'm going like, that's happening, right? And then fingers, right? And then the arm. I, I, obviously, I wasn't playing it on a classical, I was playing it on an electric, but... Not only that I had to play those notes, but that I had to keep the time. Yeah, no, I, yeah. obviously the time is where it's at. Yeah. Right, because they were, not only I had to keep the time, but they were, yeah. and I was sort of, you know, like there's a lot of uh, Eastern European music where the the center of the, of the, the, is not the bass, the center of the harmony is the middle. Right. Like a, a Balkan music, you know, they'll have a one singer singing the pitch, the tonic. And then one singer goes above the tonic and one singer goes below the tonic. And that's how they create those Bulgarian harmonies. Well, this was sort of similar to that concept. I was the middle. I was the bass player in the middle, yeah. not on the bottom. And then the, everybody the, else the, danced around the that. The Western bass player, as it were. Right, right, right. So, um, but, I, I, you know, that was a big d distraction from, <laughs> I always played it with a pick. I never played it with my fingers. Yeah. And then uh, with Caseus, I started playing all this stuff with my fingers. And partially because of my new guitars that um, Brian Gallup has built for me. Yeah, well, I was really... going to ask you about that, too. Yeah. Um, what the hell are you playing? Is that, that is that a nylon string electric? No, that's an electric electric. But it sounds what very you, classical, how you, right? How are you getting the nylon sound out of it? That are Those are flat lines. Those are uh, Diodario Chrome 13 flat lines. No shit. Through a Hendrickson amp, yeah, you know, and you can just hear that I can play finger style, and it sounds. It sounds like a nylon. I would have yeah. thought it was an. It sounds like an electric nylon. Right, but without the piezoiness, because there's no piezo. Yeah, yeah, and there's no quack. Exactly right. Yeah, there's no quack. It sounds great, by the way. It's it's thank you. I am so so proud of what what you know Brian has done. You know, and you know, I had some input in there, but man, the ideas of it's a. Uh, it's uh, uh, got a sound post in the guitar, no F holes, and the back is flat and the top is arched. Well, I, I saw it and it, it looks like you got two magnetic pick, like two pickups in it, you know, like mm -hmm. just guitar, straight magnetic pickups. Straight humbucker. I'm going, and I'm going, that sounds like a nylon. How is he? What's there must be. I, so my thought was, and I didn't know. So my thought was, well, it's it's got a dual system. He's got a you know he's got a piezo in the bridge, and then he's flipping over to that, and you know that's how he's. But because then I saw that your right hand technique with it, it makes sense to me now that those are flat wounds. You know? Yeah, and uh, I mean, there's a lot of little things that go into this. Uh, like I had to, I came up with a new nail trick, which is kind of boggling my mind because I've always had t a tough time with nails. Yeah. Um, so I do uh, uh, with those strings that are very responsive i can actually uh i have collagen and super glue mixed together on on the tip of the nails you know that collagen powder you're supposed to put in your coffee to... yeah no, i i use it every day 
Sure, right. You just I have a separate one for one of my coffee and one for my nails, because you don't want to you don't want to mix the one for your nails because I've got super glue. I stick my yeah, right, fingers. I say, uh, that could be ugly. Yeah, right. So I put my nails. <laughs> Not only that, but like you, you ever inhale you ever inhale too much super glue? Dude, you know, that no, is I'm not, not a, fun. I'm not a. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I, I no, don't, I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about. <sighs> no, no, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't touch. All of a sudden, you're like. Yeah. Oh, shit! What? what what's my name? What's my name? Yeah. You know. Because yeah, you're just blowing on your nails to dry them. You know. Yeah, but anyway. That's, that's powerful stuff. So this is. They're really hard. The nails. They sound. You know, just like real nails, and they're really hard, and I get like nowhere. You know, even on the electric guitar, you know, so like if I'm playing, the guitar's not in tune. But then if you're doing like, you know, Kind of like you know the high life. So you're using PIMA. You're using uh, you're using your third finger too, right? Yeah, and the fourth um, for the more classical stuff. You're, um, are you using pinky? No, no. No. So if Just, I say third finger, I mean you're using one, two, and three. P, P, PIMA. Yeah. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. So um, yeah, that well, that's for people that don't play with right hand technique like that. They play with a pick all the time, or maybe even just do that comping thing. Uh, doing what you just did is a bitch. Yeah, and, and at certain tempos, I, I'd say, you know, practically, practically, practically speaking, it's sort of impossible. Yeah, no, it, you it, know, it's, 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 it's the closest thing to that banjo roll, but they don't use all three. They use, you know, right. In fact, that is, I, I actually did hang out with some banjo players. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, well. Because yeah. that, that is, and the thing about the banjo players that I think doesn't, goes underappreciated by a lot of, jazz cats is just that how in time that stuff has oh, to be listen i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you something because I, how do i know this because i tried to learn to play bluegrass about 10 15 years ago mm -hmm. that shit will kick your ass <laughs> if you don't uh, grow up with it and don't play it all the time that yeah everybody's playing time yeah everybody's playing time and 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 the guys you know it's like it's like a you know if a guy's not a jazz cat, but he knows some jazz stuff and he shows up at the at a jam session, the jazz cats know that he's not a jazz. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's the sure. same thing with bluegrass. You're not a bluegrass player, but you're you're thinking, oh, I, I can play in G, no problem. So I get invited to sit in. And this is some maybe it was High Sierra Music Festival. Mm -hmm. There's this great bluegrass bluegrass band called the um, Yonder Mountain String yeah. Band. They're they're like. I don't know about the scene, but you know they fill up big auditoriums and right. big, big, big uh, stars in that world. Yeah, and uh, they invited me to sit in because we're kind of you know friendly and and they wanted to play something that said the same chords as Sweet Georgia Brown. I said no problem. Yeah, you know, and so we start and they look at me and they take a solo and I start you know I play one chorus and I play two choruses and they're just looking at me and smiling and nodding and yeah. you know I play three choruses and. Then I finished my solo and, and they're like, everything was cool. That's where it's like, but you know, we don't ever play more than one chorus. You know, which I, 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 duh. I mean, I figured it out like within seconds. I was like, oh God, I'm so sorry. And they were fine with it, but it was hilarious because that's that thing. You know, there's a tradition yeah, and it's yeah, a thing. Yeah. And they're like, well, that sounds good and all, but he's not, you know, yeah, he's it's, not. It's the Joe thing, man. No, <laughs> yeah, not, for <laughs> not for you. <laughs> not for you. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, Tony Rice, who some would say is the greatest of them all ever, you know, he was a big Coltrane fan. And he recorded yeah. Mr. PC, he recorded, um, oh, he recorded two or three Coltrane's uh, tunes, maybe three or four. But anyway, uh, you know, the time the time necessary, I mean, they're the, and the banjo players, well, they're the drummers, you know? I mean, they're, right. they're, it's, it's crazy. Anyway, let's get to your record. Sure. Well, first of all, I listened to the tracks that you sent me. I know it's coming out on vinyl. When's it coming out? April 28th April, uh, oh. is the official release date. Yeah. And uh, we'll be um, debuting the uh, the band um, in the uh, the first couple of uh, 
weeks of May and June. Okay. Last few weeks of May, first week we'll we'll, we'll tour that record, um, do some shows out out east, and uh, a bunch of shows in the Midwest, and then uh, we're working on some later summer stuff for East Coast and West Coast in the fall. Well, um, Sorry. And uh, and you know it, it's uh, it's so much fun to play this music, and um, it's a great band with Juan Pastor on percussion, who's a, just a tremendous up and coming. You know, star. I think on um, as a composer as well as a player, percussionist, and so we really have a, a more kind of a you know Latin, African fun jazz feel for this music. Is uh, Paul Ritico is playing on drums from the Panathini group on a couple of tracks, and he's touring with us as well. Wow. So you know, it's almost as if the Panathini group, you know, started instead of going Brazilian, went Haitian. You know kind of sound you know it, uh-huh. it's a neat neat sound and uh and there's so much music that he wrote so there's one tune on the record that's a voice and guitar thing that i transcribed because those music is not in print you have to actually lift it off the records right. um it's such beautiful music and um i mean it's you know it's it's a very different experience for me not having my chops my my typical bebop chops right because that's, you don't realize how much you depend on not only comfort, but just your habitual stuff, you know. Yeah. I, if I get in trouble, I'm going back to that. Right, you know. Or, I, trouble is a hard word, but, you know, if I get in uncomfortable, or if I'm out there on a, you know, doing something and I'm going, eh, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know? Right, right. No, for yeah, sure. All, and mean, so, go ahead. And I, my objective, I think, is, is to be able to play the whole gig with not ever picking up a guitar pick. And that I think was just starting when I recorded this album. And now it's 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 in full bloom. I'm shocked at, at how much this develops if you just use only that. Not only does it develop technically, but you know that idea hand connection, you know, right. where you start developing a vocabulary. Well, my problem playing fingerstyle was that I was imagining the things I would play with the plectrum right. and trying to play them with my fingers, right. that's never going to work. No. You know, I, I can't put on skates and go skiing, you know, <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> well, you, well, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, when, when I started doing this and I'd be like, you know, Groove, right? It's a different way of thinking. I would never even be able to play that. It's a different line. I wouldn't be able to play that necessarily this way. So I've almost got to come up with a different like, vocabulary. Let's, let's back up on that a second. Pick up the guitar. Don't don't put it down. Uh-uh. Play the line with your fingers. I'll play the line with the pick. So I, sounds, I was mimic. Yeah, uh-huh. it sounds so much better with the fingers. Yeah, well, and this is not the ideal pick either. I just yeah, grab whatever was in my pocket. But you're right. You're right. This guitar, any nylon guitar, is not designed for this. No, no. You know, it's designed for this. And, you know, the guitar is super flat. I apologize. But this whole thing. Of, you know, so, so you're, you're playing with, um, you're playing with a flat hand and you're playing with the curved hand. Yeah. And I know yeah. you know what I'm talking about. You know, the, sure, old, the, old, sure. the old technique in classical guitar. How do I know this guy? I studied classical guitar for a while. You know, is the is the big curved hand? You know, blah 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 blah. And the modern, right. more modern way of going about it is a flat hand, like what you do. Uh, you got a great right hand. So, like you know, the typical classical would be, you know, is you're really trying to showcase what the thumb can do.
right? It's a beautiful you're pissing, sound. You're pissing me off. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm not trying. Just, I love classical guitar music. For those of you out there somewhere. that have never tried to do that, he's holding, he's holding time with the arpeggio and then playing a single note line on the low string. It's almost like a counterpoint line. Right. The melody that you have to hold, so you're playing everything at the same time. That, my friends, is hard to do. And he's making it look really, really simple. You got a great right hand. I've been working my entire life on it, honestly. Yeah. And, and, and you it's, you know, one of those things that I'm doing quietly and like nobody gives a shit, but I, I, I do. give a shit. I love it. <laughs> but now it starts to mean something. You know, when I'm actually. Honestly, for years, I was like, when am I ever going to be able to play? When am I going to do that? And part of it is, this is the classical thing, but then all of a sudden, flamenco and yeah. all these other ethnic styles, you know, if I'm playing... You start bringing your hand down further and further until you're like... That's kind of you have to be able to uh, accept, embrace some of those uh, there you go. different approaches, oh, you know, yeah. where, where you can can lean down. So the the cool thing, uh, the live band, is you're playing your new guitar, which we're gonna need some photographs of and stuff like that, you know, after yeah. the fact. But you're Definitely. playing your new guitar, and you're you're utilizing that technique using chromes, Diodario chromes, yeah, mm -hmm. which is that's a whole adaptation in and of itself. So I would say that, you know, I've always described myself as an improvising classical guitarist. All right. 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 Um, as opposed to someone who's, you know, even though I come out of a jazz tradition, um, not necessarily bound by that. Right. Um, and what I always searched for on an electric guitar was something a little different, was something that gave me the dynamics, the counterpoint, the evenness of sustain that you'd find in a fine classical guitar. Right. Um, and, it, but at the same time, not necessarily just an electric classical right. guitar with nylon strings, because that's kind of limited. Right. No, I got, I got it. Okay. And so, you know, Brian, you know, took this idea to heart, and I would say that in terms of pure musicality, these are far superior to any traditional arch top or traditional solid body out there. Right. Um, I, mean, I hear what you're saying, yeah. And you can hear that. that I, I've tried to play this music on a, on, a, on a fine traditional arch top. I love traditional arch tops, but you just can't do this on it. No, you know? but the, 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 um, the way that it propagates sound is completely different, and the dynamic is different. And for people who are technical, there's an attack attack rise time crest factor and decay and then the long tail and all of that is so different from from flat top to arch top to classical to nylon to electric to uh, it's, all, it's all different and that's why guitars sound the way they do but right i don't want to bore you with that but we we we, we kind of got a uh, you, we've been talking a long time you and i can get going can't we <laughs> we so, can so so here's the deal um the it, i'm always interested in fresh stuff Mm -hmm. Now you might say, well, this guy composed this stuff. What year was that? Um, but the, the approach to this music, you're right. It's fresh. It's in, you know, what's interesting is um, yesterday I interviewed Jonathan Butler, mm, from South yeah. Africa, and uh -huh. he's got a, the whole South African vibe, you know, that, right. that, that feel is different. Marcus Miller, um, uh, you know, he produced the record. It's a cool oh, record. Cool. Very and it's cool. got a, it's got a different feel. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Nefazari, the, he's 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 a guy he lives over in um in sweden if i'm not mistaken I probably oh, I, don't, I don't know him but he's yeah. he, his whole thing is um is is um latin jazz mm. so we did a little thing with him we're talking about you know the claves and all that kind of stuff and then i listen to the music that he's playing listen to music that the jonathan's playing listen to music that you're playing i'm listening to and all and uh, Al Di Miola was just on our cover a little while ago. And yeah. he, if anybody can play that stuff with a pick, it's Al. Right. He plays with yeah. a pick. Oh man, and, it's and just he, chops. He, he's the ridiculous. only guy I know that can do it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he can do all that stuff with with a pick. I, you know. Okay. Um. And anyway, but but um. So I'm hearing all this like um, 
African influenced music. And the two guys I play with on Thursday nights all the time are one's mm. from the Ivory Coast, and one's from Cameroon, mm. bass, bass player and drummer. So I'm I've been getting that infused for the last year, year and a half, two years. And I got to tell you, man, but this is the 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 melodies, and that are in that music that you're playing and the grooves that are happening in that music are, are really cool. They're very fresh. Your playing is great. I mean, you know, your playing is great. And and the thing that, that you do that I really, really love is you're not afraid to be thematic and have motifs, which is really cool in your own playing. Mm. You know, you're, I hear that. Uh, that's awesome, man. Cause I, 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 I always wonder, you know, is it, is it going to be lost on, on, you know, some folks, but what I notice is that first of all, when I am playing with my, my fingers, and not the pick. I am more thematic and more melodic in general, more groove oriented. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know what I'm hearing when I'm when I hear you do it. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, and uh, but I feel like culturally speaking, like you know, I, I think there's a movement that wants to 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 have jazz be this African American thing, and everything else is kind of an add-on or an right. a, 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 well, you know I, I, I hear you yeah. and and I, i'm starting to think more and more that you know we're talking about a planetary movement that started here but it's you know there's jazz from india that i've explored there's you know there's improvisational music from all over the world that has these african roots but it's coming full circle i mean there was a time you'd go to africa and you'd be like I don't know what they're talking about because there's no jazz in Africa. There was, you know, at a time it was, there's tons of African cats who played great, but you asked them to swing and it was like, ooh, this is not there's happening. No, there's no swing. They don't, they don't. You know, and, and, but now that's starting to change, you know. Well, it, well, the guys that I play with, they can swing, but yeah. Oh, and there's just tons of cats who were killing out of, yeah. you know, South Africa in particular. Yeah. And, um, and so you start seeing that this, this movement, this, this idea that is improvisation and groove in, in jazz that started as as part of the American experiment is now like all over the world and there's every flavor of it. Yeah. And and I, I I just think it is limiting to try to say that, you know, this is only a black experience and everything else is never going to be the same. You know, there are different traditions, you know, and yeah. I love all those traditions, but I think there's room for this, these traditions to not uh, change, but to grow. Right. You know, right. so when I'm playing this music, which I mean, I think that Franz Caseus, when he was playing with Harry Belafonte, when he was writing this music, you know, he would write these riffs and, and you know, you know. can't play that without hearing the piano going you know and hearing the bass going you know what i mean it's it's yeah, in no, there no, I, 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 this is it's a this is an exciting thing that's happening that's just bubbling up like right now and and and, and, and it's like, like when i say right now i'm talking in the last six months year maybe I mean, it's just kind of, it's just now it's just like, you know, it's, it's, and it's, yeah, it's not just yeah. me. It's, 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 it's all these different people in different places yeah. seeing the relevance of all these things in a way that, that maybe hasn't been uh, as available before. Well, you know? what's really cool is um, when you, you got the music from Franz, Caseus, is that my Caseus, uh huh. Yeah. You get the, the music from him. Well, for, actually, from Mark Rebo. Well, or from Mark Rebo, okay. Through, I mean, yeah. you got his music, all right? That, right, that's, yeah. And and then it's coming through your filter. For sure, for sure. As collaborated with all the individuals that are playing, bringing their thing to it from different places in the world. Now, you know what I'm saying? You know. Well, and that's a really good, you know, so to add to that, I had to make a conscious decision not to use a Haitian band. I could have just gotten all Haitians to play this music. But then it doesn't have the fabric. Exactly. I, I struggled with that. Yeah, you know. No, no, no. You got it. My favorite, when, I, when I'm when i playing, my favorite thing is there's one little band that I play with that 
um, Cameroon, um, Japan, mm -hmm. which is very, very cool. And a guy from Canada, mm -hmm. you know, pasty white boy from Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, but 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 that's my favorite. That's my. I don't like it. I don't. I don't. I like it when I see tapestry fabric. You know, and and I like to. And that's what I like to hear. Yeah, sure, you, you sure. Can hear that. I mean, you know, like if it's if it's an all black band, and nothing. But listen, you know, there's a lot of all great all black band and all white bands. A lot of great. But man, I I just they're gonna send me hate mail. But yeah. I love it, and it makes it, I feel it more when I'm when I'm feeling the the the, the group sure. from all these different cultures coming together. I, well, you know, I mean, the, you you hear so many so many great jazz musicians. Um, I I think knowing the tradition and respecting the tradition is 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 crucial, right. you know. And I think you'll find that you know you can go to Valencia in Spain and find cats who are playing who do know the tradition and we can all call tunes and all play the tunes and we have an understanding of certain tradition um, but at a certain point I like to say you know like that old joke the Confucius say uh, the stiff unyielding tree is usually dead you know <laughs> like I think there's conservatism and tradition. We've talked about this before, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, we have. We have. And, and, and it needs to be like, so for me to take this music and, and sort of let it go where it kind of yeah. wants to go, I don't think that's me necessarily as much as it is me reflecting what's happening in the world today. And I think you were just saying the same it's thing, coming, but it's, 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 it's a scene. It's coming through you, no doubt about it. It's coming through you. And it's not, and it's not necessarily just me, though. You're like, oh no, you know, no, no. I'm not. What I'm saying is, is that you're, you know, you opened up the box and let everybody play with the toys. You know, and, exactly. It's this know, kind of thing. And listen, man, we got to run. I'll send you pictures of that guitar, and yeah, you've got some pictures, pictures of the album. The guitar, and let me know a little bit about the the luthier, the guy that you worked with, and the specs on it would be great. I mean, any, anything you yeah. can tell us about that would be great, and you can give us his URL. For sure, um, you know the artwork for the album and, and all that kind of thing. Let, let me let me just let me make sure I get this right. So, do your elevator speech on the record. It, it's coming out when? The album is coming out April twenty eighth officially, and uh, it'll be available on my website. It'll be available on all all formats. It'll be uh, available as digital download, right? With two bonus tracks, okay, or as vinyl, right? There will be no CDs. Okay. Well, um, yeah, you know what CD, CDs are, right? <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. And they don't sound good. And why? You know, at this point, uh, at this point, you know. You know. Um, but what I was going to say is that um, we, we didn't really talk, talk that much. The record has got a very cool groove, very cool vibe. The playing is great. Um, it's it's fresh music. It's it, it's you can't be put in a box. You got to have to listen to it because it's a it's kind of a of a new thing. Um, but I also think there's a bit of a party in there. Like you can get absolutely. down. No, no, and that yeah. that's what excites me about it. Is just we can we can stretch, but man, people can can move. Well, and you so know what, it, what did Lonnie Smith say? Doctor Lonnie Smith say if they're not doing this. <laughs> we're doing it wrong. Exactly. <laughs> and my, my totally. Also, I don't want to say that it sounds sexist, but the idea is it's the same thing. And Miles said that if you look out in the audience, if it's not half women, we're doing it wrong. You know, <laughs> now, that's sexist. But he, what he meant to say is, if peop, if your average person who's not, you know, hip to jazz, you know, can't dig it, right? It's not it. really sexist. You know, fifty-fifty. Yeah. We should reach reach every every demographic. You know, well, so you, you know, but you know what he meant. He. Meant, I know. You know, I do. So. Yeah. Listen. I do. Fareed Hawk. Guitar thank you, brother. Genius. I'm I excited that, about this man. record, man. Oh, thank I you so much, man. You're so cerebral, and you're also very, you know, you've also got the physical thing going. You know, you really think through all the stuff that you do in a way that I really just enjoy, you know, because I know when you're doing this, I know what's going on here. And I I love to watch the energy just pour out of your head. And seeing you live is a treat. I got to mm. do that at, out at the Rocky Mountain Archstyle Festival. And you're a wonderful performer. You 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 connect 
with the audience through your music beautifully. I, I really loved it. So well, that's very kind, man. I, want I appreciate your, it. I want your tour to do really well. I want this record to do really well, and I really appreciate you, man. All right, brother. Bob Thanks Baker so for Jazz Guitar Today with the great Fareed Hawk. Thanks, man. See you. Talk to you soon. All right, See you, bye, brother. Bye-bye.